I've been playing too much for NAF. <laughs> Same. Um, that evening, after dyeing her hair from cotton candy pink slime green to a passionate purple, Mandy searched again through the newly re-decompiled FNAF 3 files one by one, looking for the picture of the metal building. This time she was going to take a screenshot of the discovery so others would believe that it came straight from the game's files. Then she'd have solid proof to show everyone she wasn't lying. Only problem was, she couldn't seem to find it. Where is it? It had been there just last night. She hadn't created it out of thin air. When she got to the end of the files, her head started to throb, but she didn't care. She started right from the beginning again, to see if she accidentally skimmed over it. Second time though, she still couldn't find the picture. Defeated. She slouched back in to her desk chair. How could it be there one night, and then gone the next? She rubbed her eyes with her fingers. How was anybody going to believe her when the proof was gone? She didn't understand how it could have suddenly disappeared. She logged back into the forum and updated her thread. Subject. Hot FNAF 3 find, not so much. Guys, I don't know what happened. The photo was really there in the game's files last night. Now it's just gone. Disappeared. Like someone took it from the files. I'm not sure why. She felt stupid. Why had she posted the photo so quickly? Why hadn't she taken a screenshot of her proof the night before? Gamers Unite was her safe and happy place where she could be herself. Now she was suddenly looking like some kind of flake that no one believed. Why are you such a freak show, Mandy? Her eyes started to burn again, so she blinked a few times. She inhaled and blew out a slow breath, then squared her shoulders. This wasn't going to stop her from finding out where the picture had came, come from. She knew the picture had been in the FNAF 3 files, even if no one else believed her, that it was real. It had to mean something to the game law, or to be connected to the FNAF universe in some way. Maybe it was like her dad had said, it was there for a reason the players weren't aware of, like for inspiration. She clicked on the link Lindy had sent to her and started the reverse image search. She put the strange looks haunted now.jpg image through a search engine to see where the photo might have originated, or even where this building was actually located. After a couple of minutes, several links appeared, pages and facts, with possible leads. The list kept growing. This was going to take forever. Goosebumps rose on her arms, and she shivered in her chair. She was suddenly super cold. She sighed, spinning her chair around to get a sweat, sweater and froze. Peering around the corner into her bedroom was a small child looking at her. Mandy held her breath and didn't dare move. The child looked to be a boy about five or six with brown hair. He was tucked behind the doorway, covering most of his body. She saw his little hand gripping the door jamb, the shoulder of his bright red shirt. One eye peered at her. She blinked and he was gone. Mandy realized the breath, uh, sorry, Mandy released the breath she'd been holding and started to tremble in astonishment. She waited a moment to see if he would appear again, but he didn't. She pushed herself up out of the desk chair and slowly walked to her doorway, stepping out into the hall. She wasn't sure what she expected to see, but all she saw was her normal hardwood floor and eggshell covered walls. That was super weird, she whispered, then ducked back into her room, shut the door and locked it. Mandy awoke in the dark, her heart pounding, but she wasn't in her bed. She was lying on a hard floor in her pyjamas, freezing. She pushed to her bare feet with a shiver, trying to understand where she could be. This wasn't her house either. She could sense the space around her was too large, too open. She reached out with her hands as she walked, hoping she wouldn't run into anything. She finally felt the wall and glided her hands across the cold, grimy surface as she took small steps. Her eyes began to adjust and she realised she was in some kind of warehouse or large building. A faint yellow light checked on, uh, sorry, clicked on, huh? <laughs> in a large area making her blink to adjust to the strange lighting. She spotted a box of animatronic heads and body parts on a black and white checkered floor. No way, she whispered. She was pretty sure she recognised Fazbear's Fright, the haunted house from FNAF 3. Her heart started to pound in excitement and fear. Was she dreaming? She had to be, right? Before she could think what to do next, the small boy she'd seen in her room appeared in front of her. She recognised his red shirt, jeans and blue sneakers. Up close, she could see that his brown hair was sort of spiky and must. His dark eyes looked empty. Hi, she said, unsure of how to start. I'm Mandy. You've been visiting me, haven't you? What's your name? The ghost didn't respond. He just stared at her in a despondent way. Weird meeting you here, huh? 
Mandy glanced around, wondering how she could get out of here, when she was pretty sure here didn't exist in the real world. Why do you think we're here? She rubbed her arms, trying to get warm, and her teeth started to chatter. Do you know the way out? She stepped toward the little boy, but in a flash, he spun around to run. Oh, snap, wait, stop! Mandy took off after him down the hallway from which she spent countless hours fending off animatronics. Her feet slapped against the hard floor. It's not safe here. There are things that want to hurt you. Man, the kid was quick. He turned corners and ran through rooms too fast for her to keep up. Stop, come back. She saw a flash of his red shirt as he sped into a room. She shoved through the door after him, but when she looked around, she couldn't find him. She was in some sort of storage room, shelves lined every wall, all filled with animatronic parts. There was a bear head, a small box of eyes and arm and legs. Hey, come out, please, she whispered, although she wasn't sure why. A big box was set off to the side. She looked behind it, and there he was, sitting down, his legs pulled to his chest and his face tucked to his knees. He was hiding, poor little guy. Hey, don't be scared. I'm not going to hurt you. She got down on her knees in front of him. He lifted his head and a chill skittered down her spine. In the yellow lighting, his eyes were so dark, it was as if empty pits stared back at her. Uh, it's okay to be scared. We can get out of here together. Come on, take my hand. She reached out her hand, but the boy didn't move to take it. Please, I can help you. What's your name, anyway? She moved closer, her knees scraping against the floor as she reached out to him. She hesitated when a strangled growl echoed in the room. What is that? She whispered. A wave of fear and adrenaline washed over her. She peeked over her shoulder, expecting to see a freaky animatronic and exhaled when nothing was there. She turned back toward the boy and he sprang at her, his mouth gaping wide, his teeth huge and sharp. Mandy screamed as, he, as she jerked upright in her bed. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, she whispered as her pulse fluttered erratically. She searched around her dark bedroom. She was at home. She was okay. Just a bad dream. A bad, bad dream. It's over now. She licked her dry lips as her pulse began to settle. She grabbed Mr. Happy and tucked him under her arm as she rested her head back on the pillow. But her eyes lingered on her locked bedroom door. The next day at school, Mandy was nervous returning to Donovan Prep. She wouldn't meet anyone else's eyes. Yeah, she wouldn't meet anyone's eyes as she walked to her locker. Usually she held her head high as she walked to the halls. But today she just didn't have it in her. She could sense other girls looking at her, whispering behind her back. It made her want to hunch over in mortification and shame. The freak show who really had become the entertainment of the week. After the strange dream last night, she hadn't been able to go back to sleep and she just tossed and turned until breakfast. Now she felt a little like a zombie that everyone couldn't help to stare at with shocked amazement. She passed by Melissa and Lily in the hall and they burst out in laughter and all the pain she felt yesterday came tumbling back to her. She clenched her fists into her hands into her fists. It doesn't matter, she told herself. I just need to get through this day. When she got to her locker, she spun the combo and slowly opened the door to make sure there were no hidden surprises. A few girls giggled at that. To Mandy's relief, everything was normal and nothing puked at her face. She just had to put in some of the newly cleaned books she'd taken home with her the next day, the day before. Her phone vibrated with a message from a number she didn't recognise. When she clicked on the message, a boomerang photo of herself appeared with green goop launching at her face with, from the locker. It was like watching her own nightmare on replay over and over again. Mandy clenched her jaw and deleted the message, blocking the unknown number. Then, with her head down, she slammed her locker closed and rushed to her first class. At lunch, she found the tree she always sat under. She started messaging with Lindy. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, kinda. But I've never seen one. Have you? I think I did last night. Then I dreamt of him. Him? A little boy who doesn't talk and just stares at me. Wow, that is creepy. Totally. Mandy typed, Why do ghosts haunt? into a search engine on her phone. She clicked on a couple of website links and articles that appeared. Unfinished business? With me? Not that I know of. They have a message to tell you. Okay, what kind of message? They don't know they're dead? Hmm. I sure don't want to be the one to tell him after the gaping mouth scare. Basically, she was still at a loss as to why the ghost kept appearing to her. When it was time for study period with Melissa and Lily, Mandy kept her head down while doing her homework. As usual, the girl struck up one of their fascinating conversations. May said, I mean, Mandy, I just loved the purple, Melissa said quietly from behind her. 
Mentally, Mandy rolled her eyes, bouncing her knee underneath her desk. What's the matter, Mandy? You didn't care for the green? Lily piped in. We could have called you Watermelon Head. Mandy remained quiet. Oh no, Mandy's not talking to us, Lily. I think we hurt her little feelings. What's the matter, Mandy? You're too good to, help to talk to us now you have purple hair. Maybe we broke her, Lily, Melissa said, barely holding back laughter. Oh, that's perfect. Mandy didn't respond. Couldn't. She acted as if they weren't even there. The truth was, she hated confrontation, and yesterday she'd been hurt in a way she couldn't soon forget. She felt like a punching bag, bruised and beat up, but she was beginning to realise that letting them know that they had defeated her hurt even more. She felt she was at some kind of emotional crossroads. She could stand up for herself by acting like they the, what they'd done didn't bother her, or she could sulk away, defeated and broken. Usually, she'd go with the first option, but she no longer had the willpower to make that choice, so the sulky, defeated and broken Mandy would have to suffice for now. Finally, she got through the study period and made it home without any further incident. Diving back into the FNAF mystery photo was just what she needed to forget all the drama at school. She had learnt to take the things that didn't make her happy and put them away in small imaginary boxes, hidden away from her daily life so that they wouldn't hurt her anymore. It was a strategy that worked, and she was sticking to it. It took some time going through pages of search engine links for the mystery building, but Mandy finally discovered a website that gave her a clue to the odd lookshauntednow.jpg image. Within a city website for a small town called Peace Valley, there was a picture of a similar looking building in colour. Wait, Peace Valley? That wasn't the place in Fetch, was it? I don't think it was. It can't have been. I'll have to look that up later. I don't think it was. This has to be it, she murmured. She pulled up the original photo and compared it to the size and style of the old buildings, right down to the colour of the chipped door. Yes, this is it. Now, where's Peace Valley located? She clicked on a location link. This building was indeed real, located in Utah. Oh, never mind. And the address was on Willow Field Road. Mandy leaped from her chair, pumped her fist in there and danced around her bedroom singing. She couldn't believe she actually found it. She grabbed Bobby's photo. I did it, Bobby. I located the real building. She spun around until she was dizzy and fell onto her bed, breathing hard as her bedroom spun. I have to tell Lindy. She sat up and sent a quick message to Lindy that she'd found the real location of the building, followed by a line of happy-faced emojis. Then she sprung out of bed and map searched the actual address. The location came up as a movie, movie theatre called Old Cinemas that played silent films. Mandy nodded. How cool would it be to go to an old theatre and watch a silent film? Maybe something scary like a Lon Chaney flick. I don't know what that is. Uh, Mandy's phone rang with a video call from Lindy, which Mandy answered with a scream. Ah! Lindy seemed to drop the phone, but then she picked it up and her face reappeared. Sheesh, what's the matter? I found the building. It's an old-timey movie theatre in Utah. Lindy's eyes went big. I live in Utah. Mandy's mouth dropped open, then split into a grin. I totally forgot. This is getting better and better. She spun around and then put the phone in front of her face. Okay, okay, let's get serious here. Why would a photo of an old cinema house titled Looks Haunted Now be hidden within the files of FNAF 3 and w then, when discovered be completely removed. Lindy nodded, her expression very intrigued. I smell a conspiracy. Exactly, and I'm going to solve it. Lindy lifted her eyebrows. Hey, I just noticed your hair is purple. It's so you. Here are the facts. <laughs> Number one. After decompiling FNAF 3, I discovered an anomaly within the game images. It was a colourless photo of a mysterious building. The image was called Looks Haunted Now. JPEG. I posted... Sorry, number two. <laughs> I posted this discovered photo on the forum, and the next day, poof, it was gone from the game files. Erased. Number three. I reverse image searched the photo. Sounds cool when I say it like that. And discovered the building is located in a particular state. This building is of an old movie house. I can't share the old all my secret facts yet until I solve this game theory. <laughs> but hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Stay tuned for more, Eminem. Purple, Mandy. Really? Mandy froze at her computer screen, then smiled. Her mother was standing in her bedroom doorway. Her mum's black hair was styled in an elegant flip. Her black suit fit her slim frame perfectly, and she was even wearing the power heels to match. Ooh. <laughs>
Mama, hi, doesn't this colour make you think of grape juice? She asked her. You remember how much I used to love that stuff. That isn't what comes to mind. No. Mum sighed and walked to her, bending down to give her a quick hug. Truthfully, I think of eggplant. <laughs> Mandy took in her subtle perfume. It always brought Mandy comfort. Really? How was your flight? Tiring, but it's good to be home for a couple of days before I head out on Monday. Mum glanced over at Bobby's picture next to Mandy's laptop and ran a finger over Bobby's little face. She blinked and straightened. <coughs> <coughs> oh, that was a really weird sneeze. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I need a shower. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Mandy nodded. Where are you off to on Monday again? Utah, yeah. Uh, Mum turned and walked toward the hallway. Oh my gosh, it's the word that I can never remember how to pronounce. Oh, it's a type of tree. It's cedar, a cedar, or cedar, or kedar. <laughs> cedar City. <laughs> That's wrong, isn't it? Um, it's in Utah, Mandy finished. Yep, Mum called over her shoulder as she walked away. Dinner in an hour. Mandy's eyes widened and she smiled. Oh snap, this was absolutely perfect. Lindy was from this city. She could meet Lindy and maybe the two of them could actually visit the mystery building in real life to see if there were any clues to the connection to FNAF 3. Excited, she stood and started to pace around her room. Now the only question was how was she going to convince her mum to take her along? An hour later, Mandy strolled into the kitchen. When mum was home, there was actual fresh food for dinner. No frozen food or ordering out. Mum loved to cook. Mandy sniffed at the air when she walked in the kitchen. Definitely pasta. She could smell the mouth-watering artichoke, marinara and boiling noodles. Oh, and the homemade garlic bread. Yum. Thank you, Mum. Mum was dressed in sweats and a sweater. Her face bare of makeup, her hair wound up in a small bun. She smiled as she chopped vegetables for a salad. She was going ham on the veggies, chopping with the cool precision and speed of a sous chef. Uh, it was amazing how she did that. Mandy wondered often if there was anything her mum couldn't do. I know you don't have enough freshly cooked meals when I'm away. Mum paused for a moment. Maybe we should hire a cook when I'm gone. No, that would be weird. Dad's harshly home for dinners anyway. But you are. That's not important. <laughs> Mum met her eyes. Mandy, don't say that. Everything about you is important. Mandy's chest tingled a little at her words as she watched her mum finish cutting up the vegetables. Mum, turns out I'm doing research on a historical building in a small town in Utah. And since you're going to the city, I was wondering... Mum shook her head. Mandy, I'm sorry, but Utah's a big state. True. I don't know if I'll have time to go where you need me to do what you need me to do. I do have an assistant though, maybe I can bribe her to help us out. She loves chocolate truffles. Mandy laced her fingers together. No, I mean, can I go with you? Mum paused, her mouth dropping open. And miss school? Mandy nodded. How long is your trip? Three days. I can email I can email all my teachers. They'll send me all the homework. Please mum, it's important to me. Mandy watched her mother stir the pasta and then the mari marinara. I keep wanting to say Mariana, as in the Mariana Trench. Deep in thought. Nervous, Mandy twirled a stray lock of hair around her finger. And you know my good friend Lindy? I introduced you on the video call last month. She lives in the city and <laughs> I might actually get to meet her in person for the first time. When will I ever have another chance like that? And you're always saying don't let good opportunities pass you by. Take them as they come before they disappear for good. Mum smiled. Okay, okay, okay. I'm glad you actually listened to me. I was thinking I probably wouldn't get be able to spend much time with you because my entire trip is booked solid with work. Perfect. Excuse me? I mean, it's okay. I'll be busy with research and hanging out with Lindy. I thought I would never get to meet her. She's like my closest friend. Don't you have close friends at school? Mandy crossed her arms, realising she'd almost tipped her hand. Um, yeah, but Lindy and I just click. Mum frowned as if she was trying to remember when Mandy last had a friend over to the house. How come you haven't invited anyone over in a while? Mandy lifted her eyebrows. In a while? Try three years. Mum finally gave up. Okay, if that's important, but... Oh, sorry, okay, if it's that important, but you be sure to get all your makeup work ahead of time. And 
We, and you're going to complete it by the time we get back. Mandy bounced up on her toes. Yes! Thank you, Mum. You're the best. She hugged her and sped out of the room to call Lindy. Mandy was sort of bummed she didn't get a window seat on the plane, but she was mostly just excited to be on her way to Utah to meet Lindy in person for the first time and to get a chance at seeing the mystery building. Mum was next to her, doing her best to work on her laptop with minimal elbow space. There was a crying baby on board, and Mandy was following the cues of those around her, putting earplugs in her ears. It had been some time since Mandy had been on a flight. When she was little, there was a lot more family vacation travel with both of her parents, but somewhere in the past five years or so, vacations became few and far between. With every new promotion, her parents' jobs had, been, had become more demanding, giving them a bigger workload and less time for the family. Mandy had a perfect view down the airplane aisle, giving her easy access to people watching. Across from her was an older woman with white hair, wearing glasses. She had a blanket on her lap as she read a book, a tattered old murder mystery. In front of her seat sat a man in a business suit, checking email on a tablet. Behind the older woman, a man in a hoodie, shorts and headphones bopped his head to the music. It made Mandy smile. A flight attendant passed by, and Mandy shifted to see down the long aisle. She saw a little boy kicking out his foot. He wore an uncomfortably familiar blue sneaker. Unease shifted inside her as she moved back to her headrest. Just a coincidence to see the same little blue shoes, right? It couldn't be a ghost. Taking a breath, she peeked out again, but the little shoe was no longer kicking it out into the aisle. Mandy settled back into her seat and closed her eyes. Little boy, someone called out. Mandy's eyes whipped open. She stuck her head out into the aisle again. There was a little boy running in the opposite direction of Mandy. He had brown hair, a red shirt, jeans and blue shoes. Mandy flashed cold. No, this wasn't a dream. She was wide awake, right? She pinched herself and it hurt. Just to be sure, she reached over and pinched her mom. Mandy, sorry, just checking if this is a dream. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine having that interaction with someone. I might do that. I, oh, I'm going to do that later. <laughs> I'm going to do that to someone later. Um, Mum frowned and shook her head. With the baby constantly crying, it's actually kind of a nightmare. Luckily, it's a short flight. Little boy, return to your seat, please. The flight attendant called out, passing by Mandy and going after the runaway boy. Mandy craned her neck, trying to see the boy's face. The flight attendant caught up with the kid. She took his hand and turned to lead him back to his seat. Mandy still couldn't see what he looked like. Lady, move already, she whispered. Mandy, what are you doing? Mum asked her. Just trying to see something, Mandy murmured. Unfortunately, the flight attendant continued to block her view as she sat the boy back in his seat. Once he was seated, the little blue shoe kicked out in the aisle again. Mandy couldn't wait any longer. She pushed up from her seat, ignoring her mom, calling after her. Uh, she walked quickly to the boy and stopped beside his seat. A little boy with blue eyes stared up at her. He wore a red shirt with a big red dog. He had freckles on his face and a brown birthmark on his chin. It was just a kid, not the ghost. Her shoulders sagged in relief. Can I help you? A frazzled woman asked, sitting beside the boy. She was trying to settle her crying baby by patting his back. Oh, no, sorry, I thought I saw someone I knew. My mistake. Miss, you'll have to return to your seat, please, the, the flight attendant told Mandy. Mandy turned and smiled. Yes, I'm sorry. She squeezed past the attendant to walk back to her seat. At the far end of the aisle, Mandy felt a fresh wave of adrenaline as she saw a familiar flash of red while, ta while taking her seat. Wow, Mum's hotel suite was pretty swanky. <laughs> There were two bedrooms, two baths, a lounge area, and small kitchenette. Elegant maroon and grey designs were spread across the suite, from the hanging wall art down to the pillows and lamps. A basket of fruit and nuts waited for them on the small table. You always stay in places like this, Mum? Mandy asked her. Sometimes, most times they're bigger. She set her purse and briefcase down and motioned to the bellboy. Just set the luggage by the door, please, she tipped him, and the man left. I'm sorry to drop you off and run, but I have a lunch meeting scheduled. I wasn't planning on having a travelling companion this time round. Mandy waved a hand. It's okay, Mum. I told you. I'm doing research. Yes, for a project. What kind of project is this again? 
No big deal, just the history of a historic silent movie theatre. It's about 20 minutes away in a town called Peace Valley. Small town, only about 320 residents. Oh, okay. Mom's phone rang, and she answered, then called out to Mandy. Order your lunch. I'll check in with you later. Love you. She scooped up her purse and briefcase and marched out the door, giving orders to someone on the phone. Mandy just waved at her retreating back. She walked to the large window and gazed at the distant mountains of Utah. The sun shined down from a clear blue sky. Peaceful, she thought. She went to her backpack and pulled out Bobby's framed photo. She faced him toward the view. Really nice, huh, Bobby? She set him down on the small table and dialed Lindy for a video chat. Lindy's happy face appeared on screen. You're here? Oh, sorry, you're here? <laughs> that was wrong intonation. Mandy flung out an arm dramatically. Yes, Utah, here I am. Lindy squealed. Ah, this is so cool. We're finally in the same state. I know. How was the flight? I've never been anywhere else. It was good. A little bumpy for a minute. Uh, and my ears popped as we landed. Always happens. When can we meet up? Lindy sighed, pushing up her glasses. Not until tomorrow. I have to take my brother to a little league practice because both my parents are busy today and my older brother has to work. But right after school, I'll meet you at your hotel. I mapped out the address and I'm only 15 minutes away on the highway. Sounds awesome. I'm going to do some research at the town records on old cinemas and see if anything interesting pops up. Sounds fun. Wish I could be there too. No worries, we'll be there together tomorrow. After they disconnected, Mandy grabbed Bobby's photo and slipped it inside her backpack. She pulled out a package of licorice and hooked her backpack onto her back. She'd searched the city website for bus information and the city hall location. It took her half a, a half hour on the city bus to get to the local recorder's office at City Hall, where she could research more on the history of the mystery building. Peace Valley was so small, it didn't have its own city hall, or even a police station. Luckily, Mandy had the town's information right at her fingertips in the recorder's office. According to the, the records, um, old cinemas used to be another business, over 17 years ago called Sideshow Snacks Shack. What? Oh no, never mind. Never mind. Oh my gosh. That terrified me for a second. Because if that was Snack Space, that would have mind that would have meant this is in the same universe as Into the Pit and Room for One More. And Security Breach, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> From there, Mandy researched any information in the city records to tell her about the old eatery. The business lasted for about three years, but foreclosed 17 years ago, 
Next, she researched the old newspaper records for anything regarding Sideshow's snack shack. She skimmed the papers for the first year of the business and found the grand opening announcement with the headline, Grand Opening! Sideshow Snack Shack! A family food and fun! <laughs> she skimmed the following years for any news on the business. A headline caught Mandy's interest. Young boy presumed kidnapped at Sideshow Snack Shack. The date seemed to be a few weeks before the diner closed its doors for good. Ah, so this is like a inspiration for the FNAF because uh, there's a missing child at the side, so sideshow snack shack, and therefore they use the location. Blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the date seems to be a few weeks before the diner closed its doors for good. The article stated a five-year-old boy went missing at the eatery one Friday afternoon. One moment the boy was playing a pinball machine, and the next moment he just disappeared. The mother as well as the staff searched frantically for the boy before the police arrived. Once the police began questioning the customers, frantic accounts were given of a mysterious man having been near the boy before the disappearance. Wow, Mandy murmured. She glanced at the copy of the man's featureless sketch. Dark eyes and hair, straight nose, flat mouth. The man was just so ordinary. For some reason, the paper sketch of the suspect had been printed hastily with purple ink and they'd called him... The purple man, Mandy whispered in amazement. She'd heard of a story very similar to this online somewhere. Where had she read about this? Then she remembered. The thread on missing children in the FNAF forums. <laughs> on her phone, she logged back into the missing children thread, skimming through the posts until she found the one about the missing boy and the purple man. The post did mention Utah and a family diner. All the other details were so vague that some of the comments stated they believed this missing boy st story was fake, especially the point about the purple man. In a rush, Mandy made copies of the pertinent research to take everything back with her to the hotel. This mysterious building was turning into one interesting case. An old building, a missing boy, a family food diner and a purple man. It was perfect fodder for a FNAF fan fiction piece. All that's missing is a possessed animatronic. That's true. Mandy stepped into a darkened room with rows of party tables set up. Party hats were lined up one by one on the tables like festive soldiers. The air was cold and when she blew out, a white mist floated in the air and disappeared. Freddy's. She breathed as she walked down the rows of tables in amazement. To one side of the room was the animatronic show, just like in the game she played. She glanced up at the wall and spotted the surveillance camera. Just because she could, she waved. But then, when she saw her arm covered in a dark shirt, she looked down at herself. She wore a dark, button-down shirt, slacks and boots. Manny's eyes widened in disbelief. She was dressed like a security guard from the games. The next moment, she whirled around, her heart pounding. Had she heard a scrape of a shoe? Or had someone moved something? She searched the shadows for something creepy, but saw only empty darkness. A whisper of unease passed through her. Pulse, fu uh, pulse fluttering, she started to walk fast out of the party room, glancing over her shoulder. She had this feeling like she was being watched, like something very bad lurked just behind, ready to jump at her. When she got to the doorway of the room, she stopped abruptly. The ghost stood in front of her, in his red shirt and blue jeans. This time she noticed a character on his shirt, some kind of a bear logo. The boy looked sad, but she wasn't certain he was just an innocent, lost little boy anymore. She was scared to get close to him after what happened in her last dream. His skin seemed paler here, his cheeks sunken in, and there were dark circles rimming his eyes. His hair appeared limp and greasy. Um, hey there, Mandy said to him. So, how do we get out of this dream? The ghost hissed and flashed a mouth full of sharp teeth. Mandy stumbled back, knowing there was only one way out of the room. She rushed past the ghost as the familiar growing, growling began. He reached for her, his hand slashing through air, and she darted across the black and white checkered floors. She ran through the arcade, passed by the restrooms, and found a door to a room with a sign that said employees only. She kept looking behind her, though she couldn't see the ghost. She still had a feeling he was there, always there, just currently somewhere she couldn't see him. She pushed through the door, her heart racing, and slammed it shut. When she turned, she screamed. The ghost stood in the room, his dark, empty eyes glaring at her. She pushed up against the door as if she could crawl through the wood. What do you want? She yelled at him. Just leave me alone. 
he took a step toward her, and her stomach curled. Stay away from me, he jumped on her, his face morphing into something ghoulish, eyebrows slanted, teeth somehow bigger and sharper, and she screamed as he tore at her with his hands. Scratches burned into her skin. She tried to push at him. She shoved her hand to his neck and recoiled when her hand caved into corroded flesh. Help me! Mandy screamed. Mandy, wake up, Mandy! Mandy sucked in air and opened her eyes to find her mum looming over her. Her mum's hair was dishevelled. <laughs> her expression scared. Mandy blew out. Mum, it was just a bad dream, sweetie. Are you okay? Mandy swallowed hard and nodded. Her nightshirt was damp against her skin, blankets twisted around her body. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. What on earth were you dreaming about? It was about a ghost. He was chasing me. And this time he'd caught her. Mum sighed. Really? Why was he chasing you? I don't know. He wouldn't talk. Creeps me out, Mum. A shudder ran through her. Mum ran a hand over her hair. Okay, well, it's all over now. You're safe. You sure this doesn't have to do with all those scary games you play online? And he wasn't so sure. But she shook her head anyway. Well, try to go back to sleep. I think the ghost has bothered you enough for the night. You sure you're okay? Mandy nodded and smiled. Yeah, thanks. Mum kissed her forehead and walked to her room. Mandy settled back against her pillow. But when she looked at the dark doorway, her mum had just walked through. The ghost was standing there. Fear smacked in... Mandy's chest. She scrambled out from her covers, crawling into a ball at the headboard. When she blinked, he was gone. Trembling, Mandy stood on the bed, looking at every darkened corner of the room. Her heart was racing, but she didn't see him. She quickly turned on the side table light. Uh, she, uh, sorry, she quickly turned on the side table light to ensure she was alone. No little nightmare lurking around. What do you want with me, ghost boy? She asked the empty room. And why won't you leave me alone? Manny tried to fall back asleep, but it wasn't happening. Just after two in the morning, she crept into her mum's room and crawled into bed with her. Mandy couldn't remember the last time she spent the night in her parents' room, but cuddling in close, she felt safe. She felt safe for the first time since this whole thing began. Mandy and Lindy spotted each other instantly in the lobby of the hotel. They ran toward each other and hugged, big smiles plastered on their faces. Mandy pulled back. This is so cool! <laughs> so cool. Lan <laughs> Lindy repeated, pushing her purple glasses up the bridge of her nose. And look at us, we're about the same height. Yeah, Lindy said with a laugh. You're just as I pictured you, with your leggings and big boots. Same here, Mandy told her. Come on, let's go up to the room and figure out our next move. <laughs> they went up the elevator discussing the latest FNAF fan fiction they'd loved as they headed to Mandy's hotel room. I like the ones with the animatronics are the good guys, and they crack jokes. Those are hilarious and entertaining, Lindy told her. Mandy agreed. Those are good ones. Wow, this is big, Lindy said in awe as she stepped inside the hotel suite. Yeah, I know. Nice, right? This is the first time I went with my mum on a business trip. Here, have some fruit. Or do you like licorice? I'll take an apple, thanks. The girls sat down at the small table, and Mandy updated Lindy on yesterday's findings about the movie theatre, the old eatery, and the missing boy. Wow, you're really good at this kind of thing. I wouldn't have known where to start with these records. You should be a detective or a reporter. Thanks. I haven't decided what I want to do yet. What about you? I'm leaning toward marine biology. <laughs> there's, this, there's this cool place. Uh, there's this pizzeria I'm looking at. Uh, it's with like There's this Felix the Shark thing. There's also sea bunnies in there. That's cool. You should visit California. We have some awesome beaches. I want so I want to so bad. People think I'm weird when I talk about the ocean life. They call me fish nerd at school. They call me freak show at mine. They laughed together. Mandy found it funny how small uh, and petty the DP drama felt from this distance. There was some hope out there, having met Lindy, but maybe things wouldn't suck forever. Mandy reached for her licorice as she beat as she booted up her laptop. Anyway, I'm thinking the disappearance of the boy in this story could somehow be connected to Five Nights at Freddy's lore. Because of the missing kids theme, Manny tugged off a bite of licorice. I know it's a long shot, but I'm willing to try to find out. What's the next step? Are we heading to Peace Valley to see for ourselves? Yep. It's been a long time, but you never know what might still be there. Lindy grinned. I was hoping you'd say that. A short drive later... Mandy and Lindy cruised through Peace Valley. The sidewalks were small and the businesses a little outdated. 
Mandy didn't recognise any big chain stores. She noticed a Harold's hardware store and a Sally's groceries. A post office sat on a corner and a town's single, single streetlight was in the middle of the town. By the gas station. Wow, a single streetlight. That's funny. The mountains around the town were amazing and she couldn't seem to get enough of them. The road signs mentioned a river not far off and she wished selfishly that she was here purely as a tourist. She would have loved to check it out while she was here. Lindy pulled into the small parking lot behind the old cinemas. The day was warm as they walked around the old building, stopped in front of the door, Mandy sighed. Here goes nothing, she said. Lindy smiled in response, grabbing the door handle. Together they walked through the front door of the silent movie theatre. For some reason, Mandy felt a little lightheaded and her palms went damp. All this research and she was finally seeing the mysterious building in real life. She didn't know what she would do if all of this was for nothing. If the photo in the game files turned out to be a fluke or an error. It couldn't be for nothing. It couldn't be. This is pretty amazing, she said. Lindy nodded. Yeah, it's the most exciting thing I've done in a while. Same here. They walked in to see a cheap plastic card table set up for ticket sales. The carpet was red with some rips in the flooring. Old posters of black and white silent films were pinned to the walls. There was popcorn, candy and soda cans for sale at another counter. An older woman with satin flowers in her hair sat at the ticket sales table. For two? Her voice sounded raspy. She wore a faded apron with old cinemas printed on it. Mandy and Lindy looked at each other and smiled. Yes, please, Mandy said. They exchanged money for tickets. Uh, and then they jumped for tickets uh, for the silent film of the day. As they walked toward the cinema room... Mandy noticed a maintenance man working on some kind of electrical box embedded in the wall. Hey Marge, he called out. Gonna have to buy a fuse. What's the matter? The older woman asked. The flights in the theatre keep flickering. All right, Jim, do what you gotta do. Damn thing hasn't been reliable in 20 years. Guess some things never change. Mandy put her hand to Lindy's shoulder to stop her. She turned around and walked back to the maintenance man. Excuse me, sir, you've worked here for 20 years? Surprised, the man lifted his bushy eyebrows as his eyes were drawn to Mandy's purple hair. Yeah, got a problem with that? A man's got to make a living somehow. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't have a problem with that, sir. Um, yes, you have to make a living, totally. Mandy looked at Lindy and then winced, then turned back to the man named Jim. I was just wondering if you worked here when it was the previous business, when it was called Chi Sideshow Snack Shack. The man gave a nod. Oh yeah. That was a fun time back then. Lots of families, lots of business. Shame it closed its doors. Why do you think it did close its doors? He scratched his neck. Well, there was an incident, and then after that, not much business. Do you mean the incident was the missing boy? Jim squinted at Mandy. Why you want to know, kid? I'm researching this building and read an article about five missing, uh, about a missing five-year-old boy. Jim tossed his tools in a bag and wiped his hands with a dirty towel. Yeah, that was the only bad time I recall. After he went missing, families got scared and the business went downhill. Not much you can do to change people's minds after a tragedy, you know. Were you there that day? The day he went missing? Oh yeah, I even helped with the police search. He struggled his thick shoulders. But we never found him. Crushed the poor mother's heart. Crushed a lot of the hearts that day. Can I buy you a soda and you can tell us more about it? Jim pulled at his ear, thinking. Research, you said. Mandy nodded. Yes. What for? <laughs> I'm a blogger. Jim nodded. Ah, one of those daily type things online. Time's sure I've changed. Um, yeah, kind of. I guess. I got a break coming up. I could use an orange soda. Mandy bought them all sodas and they sat at a table by the concession counter. Jim took a long swig of his soda. Guess I should tell you about the boy. Always came in with his mom, nearly every day. They'd order hot dogs and lemonade because that was the kid's favourite. We had a couple of pinball games back then and he'd play and pray. The mother would say hello to everyone. Real, fam well, real nice family, you know. We gotta serve them as regulars. Kid's name was Stevie. But when it's time to go, he never wanted to leave and he would hide from his mother. She'd have to go all over the building and look for him. Sometimes he was under the corner table or in the bathroom. One time he snuck into the kitchen and hid it behind a garbage can. Clever, Lindy said. Jim nodded and sipped his soda. 
that he was. Feisty is what I call it. Sometimes I'll help the mom and track him out. Oh, someone might be under the pinball machine. <laughs> then she'd find him and tickle him. That kind of thing. And the day he went missing? Mandy asked. Uh, yeah, Jim said. Sad. Pretty regular day starting off. They ordered their usual and ate. He played games for a couple of hours. Then his mom called for him. That it was time to go. She started poking around his usual hideouts. Then she came and got me for help. Couldn't help him though. Then we started to get real nervous. Looked everywhere. Poor kid was just gone. Called the police then. Um, what about the purple man? Did you see him? You mean the stranger? Jim shook his head. Nobody I saw that was suspicious. So, uh, sure. Sometimes we got new people I hadn't met before. Some of the customers started telling the police about a guy they saw, they saw, they swore they saw. And they all had different descriptions of the guy. I never knew who they were talking about. Nothing came of it. I think everyone was just scared. We lived in a small, quiet town. Everyone feels safe here. Then something like this happens and they wonder if they really are safe. But someone had to take Stevie, right? Mandy asked. He couldn't just have disappeared. He sighed. Yeah, he couldn't have just disappeared. Mandy and Lindy left without watching the movie because Lindy had to get home. That's sad, Lindy said as they walked to the car. Yeah, real sad. Mandy's mind was zipping through all the information. Do you see some of the similarities of this incident to Five Nights at Freddy's? Lindy shook her head. Not really. We have a missing boy and a purple man. Get it? Like William Afton, the purple guy? I guess so. That's only two small things. Mandy paused at Lindy's sedan. But you do see it, right? This must be the reason the photo is in the game files and why it got deleted the next day. The creator of the games was leading us here to solve something. We just need to figure out what so we can set the forum straight. Lindy stared at Mandy a moment. Are you okay? Mandy gave a nod. Of course. Why? Just seems this is really important to you. You know, it's a big thing to prove and it's okay if you can't. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Mandy tugged at a loose strand of her hair. To her, it would be the end of the world. The forums, the fan community, they were really the only things she looked forward to being a part of. She'd found Lindy through those message boards. If she didn't have them, then Melissa was right. She was just DP's freak show. Then I'm going to prove it. Mandy swallowed hard. She had to. I mean, it would be cool, right? If I connected it to FNAF. Lindy nodded. So cool. But just remember, these are real people. Not a game. Promise you'll be careful. Mandy smiled. Promise.